Yeah, welcome back. So by the time you go ahead and refresh this page now, you have this error. So when you see pass error like that, okay, it means you have not included end of statement or your tax does not match. So let me show you how to debug that. So if I if I encounter any error in my code, I will leave it in place so that I will show you how to debug um, code when you have problems. So, and also the browser will give you indication of the line where the error occurs. So line 13, and let's see why that is. You see end of statement. So you need to put end of statement. And so when you go ahead and refresh that page, your page will still load, no problem. Okay, so we've managed now to create a view class only. So let's go ahead and create some more classes, all right? So what we want to do in a model view controller is to create a model class to hold this model. Now let's call that login because it's a, this model is for login model, okay? And we want to be creating other models as well for other pages. So we shall give them a consistent name. So what we shall do, our class name must have underscore model appended to the controller's name. So because we now use login as our controller and we are, we are using it also as our folder name. Okay, so we do. Likewise, all you know, um, we can call that function block out from there and then paste it right there. So um, we can call this function process for. So you give them names, function name to suggest to you what action they are going to perform. So process form that does, doesn't take any parameter. The same line of code we have written, just what we are wrapping up into functions. So we're not doing anything different. See? So if I push that inside now, you can see everything is wrapped up in a function block like that. Okay, so the same code we have written, we are putting into. Now, to create some space, we can call that out. Okay, so all we have to do now is to create a model, a class object of that, and call it a model. So, likewise, new keyword followed by the class name. Now you got your object. So all you have to do is to use that object to call that method. Process. So the same line of code we have written, we are now enclosing that into function and then creating a class object to code. At this stage, let's study this class up a little bit, this function method. Before we do that, let me quickly go through some debugging um, conditions you need to know. When you, write, um, when you create class objects, you may be tempted to use this keyword. Right? If you do that, it will cause error. Although it's a valid object, you will think, but it will cause error when you're using it like that. Okay. Um, let me refresh this page. Because this is tutorial, anything that will cause problem in a code, I will highlight it to you. All right. Using this when in not object contest, that's one of the errors. So you cannot use this keyword here when you're not wrapping this up in an object. Now, um, to create a private property, you can go ahead and create a private property like that. Dollar prefix a, for a variable name. You can go ahead and call this file extension and create another property, call it folder name. Now, you know variables hold values that can later be retrieved in your code. So, cut that out from there. And let it hold that value for you. Okay. Likewise, you do the same for your file, and then simply replace it where you got cut it out from. File extension goes right there, and the folder name goes right there. Now, uh, let me show you this. As this can also cause problems because these are local. These are not local variables. In other words, they're not defined within this um, render view page function. So if you use if you use it like that, it will cause problems. Okay? 
And let me also show you that problem as well. So I'll save. Um, so anything that will cause problem in a code is what I'm trying to highlight to you. Now we see that problem, undefined variable, folder name, file extension. They're not defined in the local function and you are using them like that. So to avoid that problem, all you have to do is proceed out this keyword, meaning this property within this class. All right? So now that you've done that, there will be no problem anymore. So your page will load accordingly. OK. So bear that in mind. When you're defining a private property, you can use it in any function within that class but you must append this keyword to that variable name. And that's um, the condition. Okay. So we've got our class model. So now we need to create a controller class. So that's your class block. Now this is our main controller. We need to create a controller for that login. So every controller page, every page controller extends main controller. See, the same code we have written, we're not writing any, we're not doing anything different. So we want the main controller to take this responsibility of creating two instances. You know, like we said, the definition, controller provide instance of the view class and instance of the model class to any page controllers that extends or inherited from it. And this is how it's done so. It, it does so in a code. Okay. And... Now, this other code belongs to this login controller. Okay, so uh, simply that's what we want to achieve here. So what we have to do is to create a function, uh, construct underscore underscore construct. Um, the constructor. And now you can use this keyword here because you are creating this variable with the intention to use it in a different class to call method from the view class. You, can, you have to put this keyword here. If you don't, it will cause problem. And um, I will leave it like that. When that error occurs, I will show you why. Now, the second function from this controller will be the function that will load our models. Where? Well, they return the instance of the model class. You could call it get model instance if you like, but it's a function name. It does not matter. You can call it anything. So what that does, it will bring this to you. Okay? Um, so now what you want this class to do, login controller, is to create instance of the parent class that will return this view object like that parent um, double colon you put your construct statement there okay so now you're calling that a parent constructor function so you also need to create a, con a function here call it a um, get default page and now that will take care of this re, uh, action here. Your get default page will take care of that. And now the other function now will be the function that will be implemented by this uh, process form. So you call that model function same name as the controller function to be consistent. So process form is simply calling that function described in the model class. So that's um, that's that in effect. Okay. Now we have our controller class um, model, login controller class, extending main controller. Because it calls the parent constructor function, that will allow you to use this view object in this class. We well, have to proceed that with this keyword because it's not local. It's not local variable, so you have to use this keyword there. And if you don't, it will throw error. Simple as that. Okay, so uh, that will end
um, in the next video, I will stop here in the next video. All I have to do then is to create instance of this login class and then that will load our pages for us. Okay, And then we can modify this load model function to be able to load um, other models as well, not just login. All right, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.